Good afternoon, and welcome to Herbal Gifts for the Holidays, a program presented by Loudoun County Public Libraries. My name is Jeremy Worley, and I'm a library assistant in the programming department of LCPL, and your host today. Please feel free to send me any comments or questions you may have during the program by utilizing the chat feature at the bottom, and I can relay them to our speaker. The holiday gifts, gifts giving season is rapidly approaching, if not already here. And we're lucky to have Megan Thompson here today with some great ideas to create gifts for the whole family using herbs from the garden. I think homemade gifts are such a wonderful way to show someone you care, and hopefully you learn some great ideas today. Megan is a clinical herbalist and medicinal herb farmer. She is the maker behind the Blooming Mountains Botanical Sanctuary brand, which uses herbs she has grown on her own farm. Thank you for being here today, Megan. We appreciate your time. She stepped away one sec. Hello. I think your mic's off. All right. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, good. Thank you. Um, all right. Thanks for the introduction and welcome everyone to Herbal Gifts for the Holidays. I feel that when I first started working with herbs, that was um, my main outlet was forcing all my new experiments on my family at the holiday season as gifts. <laughs> so. I've been doing it for a while and it's a lot of fun and I think we can all probably agree that making gifts for people is extra special and I don't know, just adds a nice touch to not just going out to the store and grabbing something off the shelf too. So, and then even better when it can come from your garden or someone else's. So, I guess that's my introduction on that. And then, so I have a few different things I'm going to go through and I'll stop after each idea and then if someone has a question on that subject we can cover it real quick before moving on. The first thing I'm going to give as an idea is making people spice blends. And this is fun because if you have a garden and you've grown herbs all year and you've harvested and collected them you know at the end of the year if you're not an herbalist and you're not making products you might wonder what to do with them and making your own spice blends is a lot of fun not to mention that the culinary herbs are pretty popular as far as people having at their house so it's um i mean pretty easy if you these are some jars you can i'm pretty sure even bald mason jar company makes spice jars like this i think i've seen them at target but if not you can find these online and i i just ordered a big box of these online they even came with little labels to put on the jar a lot of the labels are even printed out with different spices and then there's some blank ones that you can write on so here i have some thai basil some epizote and some thyme these are some of the culinary herbs I had gotten out of our garden. And once you dry the herbs, you just crumble them up and then put them in these jars. And so you can do single jars or you could even do spice blends if you have a favorite spice blend you like to use or if you're just a good cook and you know enough about making up your own. You can come up with your own spice blend, you know, perhaps like a, a meat rub or, um, you know, something specific for, for soups that you like to flavor your soups with or whatnot. And it's a really neat way, especially if you have people in your life who like to cook and to give them fresh herbs to cook with bottled up really nicely. So that is one of the ideas that I like to do for people and like I said, you can do single herbs, you can do a blend, and then you can make a little basket and put some different blends in there. And yeah, that's just a nice, nice something for the cook in your family and the people who like to use spices. That one's pretty straightforward, so I don't know if there's any questions on that. The next thing. Yeah, no, have, qu no questions right now. Yeah. So the next thing idea I have is, and this is again, if you have been growing herbs in your garden all year and harvesting them, 
And this is also something that you could order herbs as well. And that is herbal tea blends. So tea, I don't know, I feel most people like tea. I guess there's a few people who don't. And making your own tea blend is really special. You might have some favorite herbs that you've really enjoyed. If you know more about herbs and you have a specific person in mind, um, let's say you know someone who, you know, has trouble sleeping. You can make them something with lavender and chamomile. Um, there's a lot of immune support, you know, this time of year, making immune support teas, or you can just pick teas that you, that you find tasty yourself. And this could be stuff that you've grown in your garden. Tulsi, holy basil, that's a popular herb that's really easy to grow and tastes really good by itself. Most of your mints, you know, your peppermint, your lemon balm, chamomile, those herbs even just by themselves make a really good tea and they're simple ones that most people know. So if you've been growing those herbs all year, you can use the herbs from your garden or you can order herbs and, you know, just pick the herbs that you know and put together a blend or do single herbs. And this is fun. Uh, mixing teas is a lot of fun, especially if you're doing tea blends, because then you can, you know, get your bowl out and pour in your different kinds of herbs and stir them up. And this is one that I feel kids can have a lot of fun doing too. My stepson, who's about to be seven, he loves to help us, you know, get the herbs out of the jars and put them in the bowl for his tea that he's going to drink that day. We'll make him a jar of tea in the morning that he drinks throughout the day. And he finds that to be a lot of fun. And then as far as packaging your teas, you have different options. I, I have the, the way that we package ours. And it's just simple tea bags like this. This, for example, is just lemongrass, which can be a tea or it could even be a spice blend, depending what you're using it for. And these bags are smaller, fits about a half ounce of herb. You could do smaller bags, and then this way you could even do an assortment pack. You know, try some different herbs that you like as teas and make people a little box, put some paper in there, put some different tea blends. You know, if you have a tea drink in your life, get them a nice mug and a tea strainer and put them all in a box together and give them a little tea kit with your own teas. This bag is an example of a blend that we make. And so it's not just one herb. There's multiple herbs in here, and this is for postpartum moms after they've had a baby. So um, those are some options with the tea, tea blends. Another way you can package your teas Is you can order these are sealable tea bags and these are really large so you wouldn't get this size i um i use these for herbal baths and things but they're empty pouches and you would you know take a blend of your tea or your herbs and then It's nice thing about being at home by my herb cabinet and just reach around and grab things. You just fill up these bags. They're really so easy to do. You fill them, fill them up and then it just takes heat. So if you have a clothes iron, you can use a clothes iron. I will use my stove. I'll just turn the propane burner on and put a metal spatula over the flame and then just press it. And, you know, it's kind of the same thing as a clothes iron. And then you just seal the bags and then you can give people bags like this and they can just throw them in their cup. So that's another way of packaging the tea. And then the same thing, you know, make a little box, put some different types of tea in there, label the bags if they're like this and give them with the mug and all that. And that's a really great gift for the tea drinkers in your life. And it's really exciting too when you, especially if you're getting the herbs from your garden and you're sharing them, they're so much fresher than the herbs that you order. So, you know, it's gonna be a real, a real treat for people who enjoy tea to get some fresh tea blends from your garden to drink. And even if you are ordering the herbs, just, you know, the thought of making your own blend and putting them together 
that's a nice touch. Um, I think that's it on tea bags. And then, so these are loose leaf teas if you do it in a bag like this. So an idea with your cup then could be getting people tea strainers and, you know, they come in these little ones. These are pretty popular and you just pack them with the herb in here, stick them in your mug. This could be an idea to go together. There's different kinds that sit over your cups and you pour the herb in. So whatever you have handy or works best for you. Megan, we had a question real quick about the previous gift. Yep. Um, just a question. Since there are no preservatives, what is the shelf life of a spice blend gift jar? Okay. So like a- if your herbs are dried properly, which just means they're dried all the way, um, I mean, there's a year. There, As long as there's no moisture, the herbs aren't going to go bad. It's just that they will lose their vitality over time. And then if people are storing their spice blends like out on the counter, not in a cupboard where it's dark, you'll see the herbs start to lose their color. So with about within a year of the herbs sitting in a jar, especially if they're out in the sun, then that would, you know, basically by next Christmas would be when they would want to swap out their spice blends for something fresh. But as long as the herb is dried, and you know with these jars they're glass the lid seals really tight so they're not getting air in they're good for a year at least and you know really they're they're not going to go bad after that they just won't be as vibrant and taste as good okay cool thank you you're welcome all right so next another idea And I feel this is something that most people have heard of, but are dream pillows. And I feel they're pretty popular. It's just a fun little thing you do. You put herbs in there that either help with dreaming or just nice relaxing. You know, that's what most of them are, just herbs that are relaxing. So it's the idea that they help you fall asleep and get into that dream state. And, you know, a lot of these herbs smell really good and you put the pillow either in your pillowcase or just under your pillow. So that way, when you lay your head down at night, you know, the idea is like you're laying on the herbs and it's supposed to help help with dreams. And so with that, a super simple way to do it is to buy these little canvas bags. These are just cotton muslin bags. And all you do is put your herbs in it. So these I have, and they are, this has lavender and chamomile in it and they smell so good. So just this little bag, someone can stick under their pillowcase. And so then at night, they're going to be smelling in that lavender and that chamomile. This is a real simple, basic way to do it, but there's a lot of other neat ways to do it. So if you, perhaps you like to knit or crochet, you're good at either one of those. You can make little dream pillows. You would just make two squares or rectangles and then connect them, put your herbs in, sew them shut. And then the same thing, even if you like to sew, you can find really fun fabric. And I had hoped to maybe get one of those together. I'm better at sewing than I am knitting, but I didn't have time. So, but you can go to your, um, you know, anywhere and find fabric, or even if, if you really know the person, maybe you have something sentimental, like an old t-shirt of theirs, or, you know, something that has sentimental value that you wouldn't mind cutting up and reusing, but, you know, any kind of fabric you can get. And then the same thing, you would just cut two squares or two rectangles and sew them together, leave the one side open, stuff your herbs in, and then sew them shut. And then people have those to stick under the pillow. And this can also be fun with kids. They can help you stuff the herbs in. And, you know, it's a fun thing kids could give to their friends too. And they can pick out fun fabrics for them. And, you know, obviously you might want to help them with the sewing depending on their age. So the dream pillows are really nice. And then some herbs that are good for those, some herbal ideas are lavender. We most, most of us know of lavender as a nice relaxing herb. Chamomile is a really nice one. Mugwort is an herb that is well known for helping to induce dreaming. 
and rosemary is an herb it smells really good and that's an herb known for helping with memory and so a lot of people say using a combination of rosemary with some other sleep herbs or dream herbs can help people recall their dreams if you know people that are are really into dreaming and like you know have fun remembering their dreams or talking about them you know using specific herbs actually for dreaming can be exciting because you know it's kind of just a little bit more personal for those folks but otherwise your basic lavender or chamomile um even something like rose petals just things that are nice and relaxing but have a nice scent work really good in the pillows and then along the lines of the pillows these little bags or even whatever you make your dream pillow out of also make really good sachets that people can put in drawers you know you put them these little herbal bags that's actually what i've used these for the lavender and chamomile and put them in your drawers to help give your clothes a nice scent or even hanging them in your closet. I've even had things like this where, you know, like leave them in my car and then the sun gets to them and it's almost like a nice little natural air freshener in your car. They won't last much longer than a month being in your hot car, but, you know, it's a nice fun little thing. Some more natural aromatherapy without using the essential oils. So the dream pillows and the sachets, they can kind of be used interchangeably, but that's a really nice, easy idea. And these little bags, you can just look them up online, cotton, muslin bags, and you, you can usually order small amounts of them if you don't think you'll use them that often. And moving on to the next thing, unless there's any questions about that. Yeah, no questions for that gift. Okay, so the next thing that's fun to make, and this is one that I make every year and we sell a lot at our farmer's market stand as well, the really good little stocking stuffer type things are herbal bath blends. And, you know, I feel like the holidays, it's kind of popular, like people get each other nice smelling lotion and candles and different things like that. You know, it's like we kind of try to encourage each other to uh, relax and unwind by getting those kind of gifts. So the bath blends go really well with that. And I love mixing up the bath blends. And this is a really good one with kids too, because it's just, it's really pretty to do. So I'm going to demonstrate that a little bit. And this is the basic recipe that I use for doing bath blends. You take, um, Also, for any of these things, I can send out a supply list to anybody who might, there's a certain gift and you're not, you know, maybe you don't have pen and paper with you right now or you forget. Um, just at the end, you can send me your email and I can send an email out with supplies for the different gifts. So for the bath blends, I like to use Epsom salt and, you know, it's just a basic brand you can get at Walmart or in the dollar store or something this is a lavender scent um i do like the scented ones you just got to be careful sometimes some of them smell really strong the lavender i don't find too bad but i also like to get unscented as well since when you're adding the herbs then if you have a scented epsom salt it can overpower it but you get epsom salt oatmeal and you definitely want to get organic oatmeal and then you also you want to i use the um not your steel cut oats because those take a while if you ever cook them on the stove but your regular oatmeal will break down really quickly in just some warm water or some hot water and the oats themselves are really really nourishing to the skin and they're very gentle as well. So, you know, anyone can bathe in oats and just leave skin soft and moisturized, which is really great around this time of year. It's getting cold and people's skin is starting to get dry from the cold air and, you know, heating our houses and whatnot. So you have your oats as well. And then 
your herbs of choice. So again, lavender is a really good herb, chamomile, rose, calendula, you know, things that have nice pretty colors. So calendula flowers, they're nice and bright, chamomile. Rose petals are nice. They smell really good and they're pretty. This is a wild rose, so it's not quite as colorful as your bright red roses. But so then the basic mixture, I don't really have a specific measurement that I use. I more or less eye it up, which is fine because it's just going in the bath. It's not that it needs to have a particular taste or anything. So you just take a few scoops of your Epsom salt. I'm just going to make enough for just a little bit, so I'm not going to do too much. But if you're making a bunch of bath blends, then you can get a big bowl, like a bowl you would mix cookies or something in. You can like really fill it up and get in there and stir it up, and it smells really good. So you do some of your Epsom salt. Add, I usually do about as much of the oatmeal as I do the Epsom salt. So I did about two, two tablespoons each for this. And then you just add some of your herbs. And this is fun. So if you grew calendula in your garden or, and it doesn't even, and even flowers, so dried flowers work really well too, just for the aesthetics. If the person you have is into okay. dumping it in the tub and watching everything float around, it can be fun to have some different colors in there. So I just did a uh, calendula, chamomile, and a little bit of this rose. I'm going to switch bowls so it can be easier to see. So then you just have all your stuff in a bowl. Just mix it up. All right, and then once you have your blend mixed, kind of look like that, everything all in there. And there's a few different ways that you can package it that look really nice. So, so one way of packaging the bath blends is actually using these same bags. So these cotton muslin bags, you pack and pack them with your bath blend, and then people can throw this directly into the bathtub and they can just leave it in the bag and let it sit there while they're filling it up. You can even, um, I usually use bigger bath, I use bigger bags for bath blends and these little ones, I usually get ones that are about kind of like that much bigger. So you can, you know, get a stronger bath. And then you can even hang this over the faucet, hanging it from the faucet so the water is running down over the bag. That's a way you can do it. People can throw them directly in the tub. And the nice thing about these bags is if you leave them in the bag, then the cleanup is easy. You just pick the bag up out of the tub. And if you wanna keep the bag, you can dump the herbs out and wash the bag and keep it or if you don't want to keep it, you don't have to. And then another thing with the bag is you can kind of squeeze it and with the oatmeal in there, the milk from the oats will come out and you can, people can actually like rub it on their body and use it as a scrub. 
as well as you know getting the, the water nice so that is one benefit of these bags but another thing is that the bath blend is really pretty with the herbs the different petals and if you put flowers in it so it can be fun to dump it in the bathtub so you can still put them in those bags and folks can dump them out or if you think that whoever you're gifting it to would like to just dump it in because they'd want to see the flowers in their tub then these little glass jars work really well for putting the blends in So you have them like this, and then you can get a label, make a label, put on the top of the jar. I was looking for some other labels I thought I had. I don't find them, but you can also get some string, tie some string around the top. And then if you go to your, your craft store, like Michael's, they'll have different tags, different labels. So you can get really creative with the labels and you know have a little label hanging off with decorated really nice. It's nice to write what's in the bath blend so folks know. And then I usually you know write a little something, I don't know, some kind of, calming inspiration i guess you know like add a few tablespoons or add this jar to your bath and you know relax unwind from the day or let your worries go for the day while you soak in the tub but something to encourage whoever you're giving it to to really take some time and enjoy a nice hot bath especially you know around the holidays we're running around doing this, doing that, we're making gifts for people, you know, we're getting things ready. And as fun it is, as it is, it's also pretty exhausting. <laughs> and, you know, the holiday season, it's the end of the year. So we're all needing a little break and a, a reset. And so baths are just so relaxing and just the hot water itself, but then adding the herbs, the Epsom salt, the oats, it's just gonna be nourishing for people from head to toe and it's a really simple way for folks to enjoy herbs and they don't have to you know not everyone's into drinking teas or really even wants to um consume herbs as much but i feel most people love the idea of taking a bath so this is one of my favorite gifts to give people and like i said at the farmers markets we sell a lot of the bath blends around the holidays and folks love them for stocking stuffers and whatnot so herbal bath blends i recommend giving those to people it's a really really good gift we had one quick question about sourcing some of the flowers or herbs i know you mentioned farmers markets are there any stores that you kind of recommend for maybe picking up some of the stuff they don't have yes so i was going Yes, I can go and see this now. Um, these are the stores that I know of around our area. Um, well, I guess it does, I'm not really sure where everyone's signing in from, but I'm assuming all the kind of Loudoun County area. So these are the apothecaries I know that are within not too far of a driving distance. And it's great. You can get almost most of the supplies here I'm talking about. Um, you can get all different kinds of herbs and it might even be inspiring to go in there for some other herbal gift ideas. So these places would be in Shepherdstown, West Virginia. There is Tonic Herb Shop and that's pretty easy for um, at least the Leesburg area folks to get to. And Tonic has bulk herbs. They have 
the different packaging. They have the bags, different bottles. So that's a really good place to go. And then another apothecary is in Sperryville, Virginia, and that is Wild Roots Apothecary. I'm pretty sure that's the name of it. Um, so a woman named Colleen owns that, and same thing. They have a great supply of herbs and herbal products. And then there's also Smile Herb Shop, which is in College Park, Maryland. So those are the three that I know of around the area. And I know that there's also an apothecary in Charlottesville, Virginia, and I can't remember the name of that one, but those are the herb shops that I know of. If you don't want to order things and you just want to go, and that can be nice because then you can usually get a smaller amount, like just an ounce. Whereas if you order bulk on the internet, it might be harder to get a small amount. And with shipping, I know most of the herb companies are actually really backed up right now. They have been, I guess, really ever since COVID and the mail got backed up last year. So, you know, if you're able to get out and go to one of those places, then, you know, you can look at the stuff in person and pick out what you want. And someone just had a, I guess, specific question. Where is the farmer's market? Are you, are you guys currently selling at the farmer's market? Yes, we are at the Leesburg farmer's market on Saturdays. And that is, it's on, the address is Catoctin Circle. I'm not sure. Maybe that's the name of the shopping center. <laughs> I'm not positive. So there's that. It's the Saturday Leesburg farmer's market. And then we're also at a market in Winchester on Saturdays, Winchester, Virginia. So both those places. And we will have, you know, we have tea blends, we have the bath blends, spice blends, we have different herbal products. Um, and then we do sometimes bring bulk herbs, but also if there's a request, you could either email us and we could bring it to a market for you to pick up as far as, you know, if you wanted some calendula or some chamomile, um, you know, or you could ask us at the farmer's market and we could bring it the following week. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Yep. All right. So in a line with the back blends, some really nice herbal self-care gifts you can give. And this is an easy product to make. It's, you know, not a lot of steps. There's, you know, there's, you can make lotions, you can make lip balms. All those are great. And they're not hard. There's just more than there's more steps. So that'd be something, you know, you could, I could teach a class just on making one of those products, but a real simple one is herbal oils, which can be used as massage oil or, you know, just even used as like a lotion after the shower. And these are super e easy to make. So your herbal oils, all you need is the herb that you want to use your herb of choice, um, your carrier oil, and then a jar for while you're making your oil, which just a mason, a mason jar works fine, a glass jar. Um, doesn't even have to be a mason jar, actually. I like to use just these glass beakers if I'm making a small batch for you know, just one or two people. And then you pick out what type of oil you like to use. So olive oil is a good one. Um, getting organic oil is good because people are going to be rubbing it into their skin. There's olive oil. I like to use grapeseed oil a lot. It's very light. A lot of people, you know, like that it's lighter and it doesn't have a scent. And so it will real easily take on the scent of the herbs that you infuse it with. And then there's also sesame oil. Um, not that you probably want to order from, there's a company called Banyan Botanicals. That's a one that I know of. I know Tonic Herb Shop in Shepherdstown sells small bottles of different, just plain carrier oils. So, you know, if you know, you can pick whatever oils you want, but olive oil is one most people have in their house. And then grapeseed is one that's easy to find at the grocery store, but it's a little bit lighter than the olive oil. So you just take your oil 
and your herbs and let me get mine out of the cabinet real quick. All right, so here I have some lavender from our garden this year. Lavender is a nice one. It's a simple smell that most people like and are familiar with. Some people really don't like lavender. So rose is a really good one if you don't want to use lavender or chamomile or the calendula like I use for the bath blend. Um, calendula is really good for the skin. It won't give you a, a strong scent, but it is a nice, it makes a nice golden oil and it's really good for the skin. So a really um, general ratio for oils is a one to seven. And what that means is one, if you do, I usually use ounces. So I would do one ounce by weight of herb to seven ounces of oil, or you can even do it if you use these measuring glasses here, you can do just measure out one ounce of your herb and then seven ounces of your oil. If you wanted to do a double batch, then you would do two ounces of herb to 14 ounces of oil. So these glass measuring cups are nice because you already have lines on them and then you won't have to worry about the kitchen scale and all that. So you would add your herb to your jar. Using dried herb is best. Um, if you get water and oil, it will make it go bad. So you want to use dried herbs. You put your herb in, add your oil. If I'm doing these for our oils, I do a much more precise measurement, but when you're just doing it for fun or as a gift, you don't have to get that technical with it. <laughs> so I have the herb and the oil. I'm just going to mix it up to make sure all the herb is covered with the oil. And you can see all the grapeseed. It's a really, really light colored oil, which also makes it nice because then you get to see the color of the oil really change with being infused with the herb, which I find fun personally. So then making your oils, it's very simple. Another thing you need is a pot and then water. And so the, what you're going to do is make your own double boiler. The trick with oils is that you don't want the oil to get too hot because then the oil will burn and it will just smell like burnt oil. And then also when oil gets too hot, it actually breaks down the components of the oil that are good for your skin. So you want to keep the oil at a low temperature. And then this will also bring out the scent of the herb more if your oil is cooked at a low temperature. So you would add water in your pot. And then if you have one of these glass measuring cups, you can just stick them in your pot like this. I leave this handle out so that way I can easily pull the measuring cup out of the out of the pot. So you put the water in your pot so that it would fill up around the glass jar just enough to where it's even with the oil. So you know, I still have I only have it about halfway filled up. So I would only have the water on the outside covering up to here. It's just enough to make sure your oil gets it gets heated and then you just put it on your stove and it only needs to cook for about two hours at the most and you're going to have a really fragrant fragrant and medicinal oil so i would put it on the stove you know you can get it up to boiling but then turn it down and then use a thermometer your kitchen, a kitchen thermometer, and you can get these, you know, at the grocery store, you know, dollar store anywhere. They don't have to be expensive or 
anything. You know, this was probably around five dollars. You want your oil to stay around 100 degrees. You don't want it to get hotter than that. If you keep it at 100 degrees, you'll get a nice scent. The oil won't burn. So you just check periodically, like once your oil gets to 100 degrees, you know, turn the stove down to where you're just keeping the water warm and just keep checking. And it only needs to be at 100 degrees for about two hours. And then you take it off and you use a strainer. You know, use metal strainers like this. Pour your oil through the strainer. Um, other things that work well for straining oils. If you happen to be a person that makes makes nut milk, these are nut milk bags and they're super fine. So nothing, no chunks will go through it. And you can pour your oil into this bag and then you can just squeeze it and strain the oil out from the herb. So you would strain your infused oil into a clean jar and then bottle it. And it's that simple. So some bottling ideas for your oil. There's these jars. This is plastic. Um, the plastic is nice if you think kids are gonna be using it or, you know, I mean, anybody. The plastic is not is nice, it won't break. And it's nice and light, you know, people can tip, put them in their bag easily. Um, so one thing if you're using oil, you know, the, the bottle can get slippery. So they, there's these glass bottle, plastic, sorry, plastic bottles for oils. And then you, you know, same thing, go to the craft store, get some labels, make a nice label for it, put what's in it. And, you know, if it's lavender, like a nice relaxing oil, or, you know, if you were to use something more uplifting, like a rosemary, you know, uplifting oil or, you know, whatever your intention is for the use of the oil, you know, write something nice like that on the label, make it more personal. And then it goes great with your bath blend. Um, other, let's see, there's also these bottles for oils. And they have the little like pump, like the cosmetic pump, I think is what's called when you buy them. So there's also these glass bottles, which, you know, I, I use both for our more specialty oils or as gifts. I do like to use the glass. I just think it looks a little bit, you know, the glass is a little bit nicer. Um, same thing you put the oil on, but you know, we use both in our products. So then there's the plastic in the glass. And I said they go great with the bath blends and your tea. People can enjoy a cup of tea while they soak in the tub. And then when they're done, they can rub the nice oil on. And there you go. You have self-care packaged up for folks. <laughs> so that's another idea. Someone asked, can you use coconut oil? You can. You can infuse coconut oil just like anything else. The only thing is coconut oil, it's going to solidify. So if you're going to use coconut oil, then either whoever you give the oil to, you would want to put on your label that to warm it back up to make it liquid again. You know, you can just stick your, you would take a cup, fill it with hot water, and then just stick your oil jar down in the cup. And that would melt your coconut oil again. Um, or you could put in a, one of these jars and then people can just put their hand in and scoop out the coconut oil. So you can definitely use coconut oil. It's just, you know, once it cools down, it will, your final product will be slightly different than a grape seed or olive oil. Okay. Um, let's see. The last thing I had down as far as, well, I have two more things. So I'm going to do the herbal vinegars. Vinegar itself has beneficial properties, especially, you know, the apple cider vinegar with the mother. That's pretty popular. You know, people use it for salad dressings. Um, and then there's also your white vinegars and different stuff, but 
infusing herbs in vinegar. It's super simple and it's really delicious and it's good for folks. So a really popular herb in vinegar, at least to me it is, I guess it might not be for a lot of people, is white pine. This is one I like to do around the holidays. So if you, um, you know, you don't want to go harvest from a tree right by a busy road, but if you have a nice park or maybe you have some hiking trails close to where you live, or maybe in your yard, you have some white pine, but you know, it's nice. It's, um, you know, kind of festive for winter time, but white pine makes a delicious vinegar. It's almost has like a balsamic vinegar taste and it smells really good and it's full of uh, vitamins and minerals. It's really full of vitamin C. So it's really good for the immune system. It's good for the respiratory system. So it tastes good, it's festive, and it has good benefits for the consumer. Um, I always think of it as a little vitamin C 